Warning, this video contains spoilers that reveal critical parts of the game's storyline. If you don't want to see these, stop watching now. Hello again my friends, Eric Pearson here, hope you're all doing well. Last year I demonstrated this game, Battle Cruisers. I did it for National Speak Like a Pirate Day, had a little bit of fun with that. Now, I won't be imitating a pirate today, but I'd like to show you the new version of this game, known as the Ultra Marginally Improved Edition. And they have made some changes to the user interface to make it uh, easier to use, uh, make it look a little nicer. They've also added additional weapons to the game, and some new adversaries. In fact, this game has a final boss level battle that can be particularly punishing if you don't know what you're doing. So that is the purpose of this video. I'm going to show you the final boss and a very good tactic for winning against it quickly because speed is of the essence. So I'd like to say this right now, big fat spoiler alert. If you don't want to see the final battle, stop watching now. You have been warned. Okay, that said, first thing I'm going to do is show you the loadout. I am doing battle with the Megalodon because it has a very high degree of health. You're going to need that. It's got extra platforms for mounting heavy weapons and a good number of utility slots. So, definitely go with the Megalodon. I've not tried this with any of the other ship designs. Alright, so let's go back to levels. We're going to choose level 31, Huntress Prime. So, here's Huntress Prime saying, Notice I'm using your Trident schematics thanks to your unsecured Wi-Fi. The unsecured Wi-Fi seems to be a running joke in this game. Experimental weapon systems booting up. Enjoy your last five minutes in the sun, Charlie. And Charlie says, why would I wait your, for your weapons to boot up? And I have to say, I look at Charlie here, and I swear he looks like a robot version of Homestar Runner. He does. He's got no arms. He's got a bit of an underbite. I mean, you tell me. But anyway, let's get to the battle. Now, the first time around... I'm not going to actually do anything with the ship. I'm going to give you a look at what your enemy looks like. Now at first you think, well, it's a trident with some extra piece here. In fact, when you click on it, it says, Keeps following us, seems to be warning us about something. Oh well. Interesting. I didn't see that before. But now look. This... One piece is rising up from out of nowhere. Is it a, some kind of a sail? Or or what is it? Who knows? And now it's saying, just a regular Trident cruiser. Nothing to see here. Now, very slowly, parts are going to continue emerging from the ship. And in the interest of time, I'm going to hit fast forward so that you can see what's going on here. So we've got gears turning and more pieces unfurling. Now we've got a big chain rising up and more parts rising up. I'm reminded a bit of the giant mechanical spider from Wild Wild West. And now the entire ship is popping a wheelie. This does not look good. I feel like this moment needs a narration from Orson Welles. For a time, I considered sparing your wretched little ship. But now you shall witness... It's dismemberments! Okay, that is not a good sound. And you'll notice, look at the giant Gatling gun. 
and watch the shots rain down upon us. Okay, so that's one volley, and we're already at under 50% health on our ship. That's why when we do this, we're going to have to move quickly. Because every volley is half death on our ship. So, but the good news is, as you can see, there's a slight delay between the first volley and the second. I'm estimating about... 45 to 60 seconds. In fact, we'll see it uh, ripping in a moment. Just a regular Trident Cruiser? I don't think so. Okay, so here comes the shots raining down again. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I would say from the moment the ship finishes transforming, you've got about two minutes, unless you really know how to fight back. So now we're going to try that again with me actually doing something. So here we go. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start shoring up my defenses. So go to the build menu, I'm going to build a drone station. Now, the original version of the drone station provides two extra drones per slot. But if you look carefully, this is one of the changes that they made in the game, is there is a 4Z drone station that provides four extra drones, and, an, and an 8Z drone station that gives us up to eight builder drones per slot. And we're going to be making use of that now. Now we've got six drones, and we can use that to build a 4Z. So, now, notice nothing's happening just yet. We're slowly transforming, so we've got time. And the one thing we want to be careful of is we don't want to attack this ship sooner than we need to. Because if you do, it will reveal its ultimate form sooner. And if you're not ready for that, you're in big trouble. Okay, so we're building a 4Z. So four drones plus the six that we have give us the ten that we will need to build eight Z drone stations. So that's what I'm going to do, is I'm going to queue up... All of these are going to be eight. So when we're done we're going to have another... we're going to have a total of 50 drones building for us. So, if you compare that with what you've done in past levels of the game, it's like having a full complement of drones plus an Ultralisk, which is an upgrade on the ship that gives you 50, uh, 30 drones. So we're going to have a pretty good force of drones building for us, and we're going to need that. Meanwhile, let's see what we're doing here. Still transforming, so we're still doing all right. And the other thing is I'm having all of the drones concentrate on one build slot at a time, at least at this point in the game, so that we can get these, get our additional building capacity built up quickly. Ready. We're all on it. Yep, all on it. Okay, still doing okay over here. Now, this game is basically robots fighting other robots in what is assumed to be a post humanity world. And it reminds me of something I saw when I was a kid. During episodes of G.I. Joe, the Joes would destroy large numbers of battle android troopers that were fighting for Cobra. And this was pretty much by design because 
the writers could show these kinds of pitched battles without having to worry about interference from broadcast standards and practices because all of the enemies being destroyed, well, they were just robots. They weren't real people. So that was a clever little dodge from Sunbow Productions, if you think about it. All right, so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm putting in shields, lots and lots of shields to defend against that gigantic Gatling cannon. Now, right now, we're at a point where we can spread the load around a little bit. So we're going to just leave that be. The other thing we're going to want is I'm going to build control towers because they stack in their capability. Control towers help aircraft fly faster. And we're going to need bombers to help us. How are we doing over here? Okay, they're spinning up here. Okay. Okay, we're not going to... We're not going to launch bombers just yet. But we're getting close here. We're going to get going on construction of our broadside cannon. And as soon as... This ship starts... Yeah, here we go. It's go time. Now for the bombers. So, bombers. Lots and lots of bombers. To help distract... This... This gigantic behemoth. So it's kind of like the biplanes distracting King Kong here. Okay, I'm gonna get on... I'm gonna need to rebuild... Sh I'm gonna build shields real quick. Because he's gonna punch right through. Okay, quickly rebuild as best as I can. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to build the Gatling Mortar. Now you'll notice that the Trident is also launching missiles against our bombers. Okay. Okay, so we've got the Gatling Mortar, and we've got the Triple Cannon Broadside raining fire down on on the Tridents. Okay, that's good. And we're still sending out more bombers, which is what we want. Okay, here comes another volley. Better get ready to build more shields. Good grief, what an explosion! Was that Trident nuclear-powered? Between this and the earlier mad scrambling of bombers, here's a bit of history. There was a time during the Cold War when the United States had nuclear-armed bombers flying around the clock to avoid being destroyed on the ground by a potential first strike. Between 1960 and 1968, one such operation was codenamed Chrome Dome. In this mission, B-52 bombers would take off from Shepard Air Force Base in Texas, then fly up through New England, past the coasts of Greenland and northern Canada, southward over Alaska, down the west coast, then back to Texas. I'd hate to go half these on gas with that crew. <laughs> so there's my demonstration of the final boss battle of battle cruisers. If you'd like to see the ending beyond this screen, I encourage you to pick up a copy of this game and try the tactic that I used here. Thanks again, and join me next time for more gaming demonstrations. Eric Pearson, signing off.